everyone welcome back to another week of videos on the brush by brandy youtube channel my name is brandy i'm the owner and artisan behind brush by brandy and this piece is kind of special because if you guys have been following me you know that this is the third and final installment in this set of furniture um, i did these uh this set in three different colors using the same finishes and this is the final one and i actually think i saved the best for last it's probably my favorite I usually lean towards the blues. In this case, the green stole my heart. I think this combination is beautiful. We've got a custom color mix in here um, that I'm excited to show you how to mix. And I'm excited to put this one onto furniture, but I think, think this really came alive and you guys get to see all three pieces together in a set now. So I've called this one my three good fairies because it reminds me of Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether from the Sleeping Beauty series, um, the three good fairies. And um, I think they embody that perfectly. So this one would be um, our fauna <laughs> because of the green. And I think it goes perfectly. So you guys, I'm gonna show you how we got this finish and then you guys can go back and watch the other two videos and that will show you how we put this full set together. I don't think this is gonna be the last time you see this set of furniture though. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope you guys learn a lot on these blends and mixing this custom color and I hope you love it if you guys use it respond to me and let me know how it looks. I'd love to see them. So um, let's go ahead and get started. If you like this video, click that subscribe button. Here we go. Here's where I started on these three pieces. This week we're gonna be working on this four drawer high boy, but I've also done the vanity and the three drawer chest for this set. They were a beautiful set. I found them on my local Facebook marketplace and I had to go pick them up. I haven't seen natural details on a set like this in a long time, but these were definitely not in perfect condition. They definitely needed a refinishing. I'm gonna start by giving these a good cleaning with my Dixie Belle White Lightning Cleaner, and then I need to make sure I rinse them down using water. The overall age and look of these pieces told me that they were going to be bleeders, and so I needed to give these a base coat of Dixie Belle Boss, which is a stain and odor blocking primer that's gonna keep those stains from bleeding through on my paint finish. All right, let's go ahead and mix this custom mix color that I used on my video this week. This is a mix of Dixie Belle Evergreen, Collard Greens, and Buttercream, which are the three colors I have out here. Now, anytime I'm mixing a color, I have a swatch book here that I put my custom color mixes into. And then I can come back and refer back to them with what the mix is. And then I can touch it to that spot to see how close my mix that I've redone is. And there's, if I can't see where it is, that means I've done a pretty good job mixing it. So let's go ahead and mix this one here. All right, I'm gonna give myself a little swatch on my plate just so we know what color we're trying to get to. And then this is roughly a 50-50 mix of collard greens and buttercream. And I'm going to estimate about 50-50. So I'll give myself a little bit of collard greens. Let's lighten it with some buttercream. All right, I'm going to guess this is about 50-50. I'm just using a spatula for this. You can also use a paintbrush. Okay, so I end up with a, a color that's a little too light. I need to make it more green, okay? So when I wanna make it more green, I'm gonna add a little bit of my evergreen. I'm gonna scoop out a little bit of evergreen here. And I add this slowly until I get to the custom color that I'm trying to mix. All right, so I've a little bit over mixed my color. So what I need to do there is I'm gonna go backwards and I'm gonna add more of my original colors, which was the collard greens and the buttercream. All right, and I feel like I need that to be a little more green. And if I test that next to my original color, it's pretty close, but I think I need a little bit more of the collard greens. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and touch this against my swatch and see how close I am in my book. So 
So I'm a little more green than my swatch. I feel like I need to add a little bit more of the color green still. All right, and I think that's much closer to my final version. So you can see what the mixing process looks like. It's um, a constant going through and diagnosing. If I know what my color mix is, and that's much closer, almost identical to my final version. Um, and then I diagnose what do I think it needs more or less of until I get to my final version. So that is my final color there. And the mix, um, I would say that's about 50-50 on the buttercream and collard greens and then evergreen just to tint. You guys, this color mix is such a gorgeous color. I'm definitely gonna be using this one more, I think. Um, so now that I've got my paint all mixed up, it's time to go ahead and lay my base coat on my piece of furniture. So I start out by shaping out my basic framework using my mixed color, and then I'm gonna use this little white area in the middle for a slight highlight of Dixie Belle Buttercream. At the bottom, I'm gonna save for my darker color, which is gonna be Dixie Belle Collard Greens. This is just my base coat, so it doesn't have to be perfect. I lay my colors on using my Dixie Belle Mini, and then I blend them out using my Dixie Belle Oval Medium. These are my two favorite and most used brushes. I also like to incorporate the Dixie Belle Besting brush for my blend sometimes as well. I load my brush lightly, not a lot of paint, and then I do use water to try to spread the paint a little more evenly. This helps me get smooth, even brush strokes along with the combination of the good quality brush so that I can get the smooth, even blends that I want. I also actually really like painting over a base of Dixie Belle Boss. I feel like it helps the paint bite a little better versus painting over the raw wood. So even sometimes when I'm not sure that I need Boss, I'll use it because I really like how it helps my paint lay on. All right, so now I've got one side done. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it around and get the other side. I did do the front of this piece on a live video. Um, that's also up on my YouTube channel. So if you wanna see the front of this piece being done live, you can go ahead and find that video as well. My process on this side is gonna be basically the same. So laying out that circular shape, that's gonna be my highlight of the buttercream in the middle and then my dark collared greens down at the bottom. I just thought it might be helpful to see these basic steps over again um, so you can see how I do it. I find that I like to do two coats of blended paint and that's because it helps the colors be nice and rich and saturated in my final product versus if I just did a solid color base and then just blended one coat over the top. So this is definitely my preference to do two identical coats of blended paint. You can kind of see I don't spend too much time working the colors together. My main focus here is really to just get my color layout ironed out and get the coverage that I need. And my next coat is when I'm really gonna perfect it. Here's where this piece landed after just one coat of paint. It's already beautiful. I can tell that I'm gonna love this color finish. Um, I'm thrilled with this color mix. Like I said, I'm definitely gonna use this one again. I've let my paint dry overnight, about 24 hours, so it's nice and dry, and now I'm coming back with my Dixie Belle sanding sponge and just giving it a light sanding over the top. I make sure and tack off all that dust, and now my paint is ready for a second coat. This second coat is really gonna be a repeat of what we just did in the first coat, only this time we're gonna really perfect it. So you're, notice, you know, you're gonna notice I spend a lot more time working these colors together. It's the same process though, where I start by laying on my basic colors, leaving a little space for that highlight in the middle of my buttercream, and I'm just gonna work that section together first, and then I'll move down below and focus on my blending into the collard greens. For this coat, I'm also gonna incorporate my Dixie Belle Besting brush. I like to use the Besting brush because it really helps you bring these colors into each other with a circular motion. You can pull the colors together where they need to overlap, but then I still like to come back with my oval medium and just smooth it out. The Besting brush is best for a textured style blend or more of a moody, cloudy styled look. Um, and then by smoothing it out with my oval medium, I can just really clean up those lines and get rid of the brush strokes that that Besting brush creates. You can see here that big, fluffy, soft brush head really helps pull those colors together. I just use a little bit of water to keep my paint workable, and then using a circular motion, I can pull the white and the green into each other. I like to keep the overlap area, that transition period where the colors overlap, nice and wide. I think if it gets too narrow, you create a sort of stripe in between the colors, and then it can just look like you have an orb in the middle of your piece. So I like to make it nice and wide so these colors overlap amply, and that way it looks like one color just fades into the next and you can't see where one ends and the next begins. 
I have a blog post on my website at brushbybrandy.com with some of my best tips on blending paint, but I'm going to give you a few here. Number one, don't estimate the the power of a good quality brush. I've taught classes where we blended with just cheap chip brushes and people get frustrated, but I think it's a perfect statement that a good quality brush is really necessary in this process. Your paint also makes a difference. Every paint formulation is different and I'm able to do this with Dixie Belle because it's really a blender's paint. That's why I use it because blending is my style and so this paint really works for me. So keep that in mind. You will not get the same results with every paint or every brush. I also use a lot of water when I'm blending. Uh, water just keeps the paint workable. It thins it out a little bit. You don't need a lot of paint here, just a thin layer of paint that you're working together and the water helps to achieve that. So I just use a mister bottle to lay on a fine mist of water. Temperature and climate can also really make a difference. So keep that in mind when you're painting. There are some days it just gets too hot. My paint dries too fast. Those are not good days till for blending and I tend to wait till the evening time. There are days when it's too wet and cold and my paint thickens up and it's really hard to work with. Those are also not good days. So those temperature and climate absolutely make a difference. So I've worked in that little bit of collard greens down at the bottom. That's some really nice shadowing. Use my best jing brush to work them together. Now I'm going to bring out the details and this we're going to flash back to some of the other pieces in this set because I did the details all the same for this set. I just used my finger and I dipped it in a little bit of my buttercream paint and then I'm going to go ahead and outline the details on the front of the piece. This seems like a tedious process, but I actually found it really relaxing. I did do two coats, so I did this twice um, to get the saturated coverage that I needed, but I just run my finger over the very top of these ridges and it gives you a nice, clean, even line. It's almost like icing buttercream cookies is kind of what I compare it to. I think it's kind of neat to see how each one of these pieces has a different finish on it, but by using some of these same techniques, it unifies all of them and they become a set. Some of the smaller details did require to me to get out my artist brush and paint these in with a brush. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in the edges of these spindles just using an artist brush. My finger was just too big and clunky to get in these tiny little areas. You don't have to have a steady hand to be able to paint details like this. You just need to be able to steady your hand. And I do that if I need to by just resting my wrist or my um, pinky finger on the edge of my piece. And that just helps to steady my hand a little bit. Along with the buttercream details, I also unified all of this set by using coffee bean on the very base. So they all have the same color on the base of the feet, which is coffee bean. Another way that I unified this set was through the metallic colors that I used on the hardware and the moldings on the pieces. So I'm using Dixie Belle Gilding Wax and I made a custom color mix using a 50-50 mixture of gold and silver gilding wax. This creates a nice soft white gold color out of my gilding wax. I brushed it onto my hardware using an artist brush and then sealed it in a layer of clear lacquer. I used the same mixture of gilding wax and applied with my finger just going around the edges of the molding to bring out a little bit of these molded details. This added that nice soft metallic just on a few of the moldings. I didn't want to overdo it on this piece. Overall, I think they're really kind of simple and clean um, and just this little bit of metallic is all it needed. I usually use my fingers to apply gilding wax. I find that the little bit of heat from your fingertip and the softness of the wax really work well together. Once my gilding wax was done, I sealed these by spraying them in two coats of Dixie Belle Gator Hide and these pieces are done. I think this green has to be my favorite of all this set. That custom color mix really, really works. So what do you guys think? Do you guys have a favorite piece of these three? I hope you guys enjoyed this process. These were really fun for me to work on. I found that by mixing up and using different colors, I didn't get bored working on this set. It actually made them kind of fun for me to go on to the next piece. I feel like these pieces could either go together in a room and really make for a beautiful set, or they could go alone separately and make a statement piece for any room. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making them. As always, you can find links for everything I used in this post in the description, and you can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, and my website at brushbybrandy.com.